Hi, I'm Joanna Marsh of Custom Quilts, and today I'm going to use the Janome Quilt Maker Pro 20 inch long arm to show you how I'm going to custom quilt the fifth block in the Janome Rainbow Block of the Month. Now, some of my blocks are not numbered the same way that theirs are. Um, I believe that this is block number 11 if you're following um, the the step-by-step -step instructions for the BOM. I'm just calling this the fifth block because that's how I situate it in my quilt top. So let's go ahead grab some marking utensils, a long arm quilting ruler, and let's get started. All right so I'm just about ready to start custom quilting this block and I took an air erasable marker and I went ahead and just made some quick reference marks for the ruler work that I'm going to be doing. And this will really help speed things up whenever I start quilting. One thing that I find really helpful is I mark the middle of a lot of these little portions, like the triangles, to help me uh, make sure that I keep everything nice and straight and lined up. So let's go ahead and get started. I am ready to get started quilting this. The first thing I'm going to do, just like in the other blocks that I've quilted so far, is I'm going to go around the perimeter of this block to stabilize it. So I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up to the top by pressing the needle up, needle down button. And I'm gonna do a few stitches in place and leave my tails long enough that I can come back and bury my threads um, once I'm done. So I'm gonna be using a Janome ditch ruler. Uh, this ruler is really great for just doing some basic ruler work and helping me stay on the straight lines like I need to. Okay, now I'm gonna go around this little orange square before I start quilting my ruler work inside it. Okay, so I've stabilized this little square and now I'm going to quilt my straight lines, so I'm going to quilt a vertical line and a horizontal line. Okay, just like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quilt some straight lines and I'm gonna use these dots that I drew as my reference points. So it'll look something like this. Kind of like little, I don't know, boomerangs. I don't know if that's what a boomerang looks like, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull these. Just some very simple ruler work, nothing, nothing fancy. Same thing over here. Okay, now, so that I don't have to backtrack across these lines that I've already quilted, uh, since I didn't think about my quilting plan, um, I don't want to backtrack up this line, so I'm going to go ahead and do my smoky swirls right here in my background fill. Um, what I could have done differently is I could have quilted the outer boomerangs first and gone all the way around my square. So I could have done this and come over here and quilted here then here, then here, and then I could have come up and started the top ones and gone around in another circle. And that way I would have finished the whole square without having to think about backtracking or anything like that. Sometimes I get in a hurry and I don't think about my quilting plan ahead of time. And then, you know, you suffer the consequences for that, right? <laughs> Okay, so now I'm back where I need to be to finish my ruler work. And so I'll go ahead and do part of what I told you I was gonna do. So I'll quilt the next, the next ruler work line over here, and then I'll go back and finish the top lines. So that put me kind of right where I needed to be to not have to backtrack or anything like that. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and quilt my smoky swirls up here.
I love using these air erasable markers, but the real bummer is your, your lines start to go away and it's particularly humid in here today. And so they're, they're fading a lot faster than they normally would. So I need to make sure that I'm watching my time unless I want to go back and remark everything. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do my smoky swirls here and here before I move on. A little bit of backtracking, but that's okay. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and stabilize this line um, so that I can pull to my smoky swirls. Okay, so I'm going to be quilting the smoky swirls right in here. Here we go. And I probably could have done another swirl there, but uh, I don't know. Sometimes I like to just fill it in with an echo. That way I'm not trying to squish, you know, a, a bigger shape into a smaller area then it ends up looking weird because it's kind of forced. Okay, so I'm gonna stabilize this triangle by stitching in the ditch. And it's a good idea to go, you know, slow, take your time when you're stitching in the ditch so that you're staying within that boundary line. Okay, so here I've got three reference points. They're kind of hard to see because my marks are fading, fading on me. I'm taking too long, but I'm just going to be quilting straight lines here to really accentuate this block. And, um, the ruler work against the background of the free motion will really help this block pop and look nice. So I need to backtrack a little bit here. Finish my ruler work on the strangle. Awesome. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go ahead and quilt along this line. And I'm going to stabilize my square before I quilt my straight lines inside of it. All right, really nice. Now I'm going to quilt my vertical and horizontal lines. And again, I don't want to backtrack, so I'm going to go ahead and quilt some smoky swirls here until I get that horizontal line quilted. I'm going to go ahead and stabilize this little triangle here. 
Actually, I'm going to go up and across and just finish that line up. So if you've watched the other videos that I've done in the series so far, um, I'm a big believer of stabilizing, you know, each shape prior to quilting the inside of it. And it isn't really as big of a deal when you're doing ruler work, but free motion can tend to distort the look of blocks if you're not quilting the boundary lines ahead of time. Uh, that's not to say that if you don't do that, it's going to ruin your quilt block. It's just something that I like to do. It's not a hard and fast rule. You definitely don't have to do it to have a successfully quilted quilt, you know. Um, but it's just a little tip that I find helpful sometimes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and come in here since I haven't done one of these yellow triangles yet. And I'm going to do some fun free motion loops here. Okay, so I haven't done any quilting on these small yellow triangles yet. And what I'm going to be doing are some fun just free motion loops to fill this space. And I really love this design because it fills the space really nicely all the way up to the top of the triangle. It's a very easy going design, just that kind of soothing back and forth rhythm. And it looks really great inside that space. So I'm gonna go ahead and filter on this one and I'm gonna do the same thing to bring me back down here. Right, now I'm going to do the ruler work on this little triangle to the right, and I need to remark some of my lines because they are fading fast. Okay, here we go. Then I'm going to do my smoky swirls to get me to the next part. my straight lines here. Okay, let's go ahead and take care of the square. And then our horizontal and vertical lines inside. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the quilting plan that I had previously mentioned where I go do the lower boomerang parts and then go back around and do the upper. Makes for some easy quilting without any backtracking. It's really easy sometimes, you know, to get in your own head and think about your day and, you know, whatever's stressing you out at the time or what's going on in your life and kind of forget to think about the quilting plan. And so, you know, it's important to kind of focus on the task at hand. That way you're not having to backtrack a lot. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and quilt this orange square in the center.
and I'm gonna grab a slightly longer ruler. So this is the Janome straight edge ruler and the ditch ruler works fine for this. It's just not quite long enough for what I want. And I can easily just move that ruler um, to wherever I need it, but sometimes I just find if I have a longer ruler, it's easier if I'm not moving so much. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remark my lines because wah, 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 they're kind of, oops, they're kind of going away from me, right? That one doesn't look like I evenly spaced it very well, so I'm just going to change the positioning just, just a touch. Okay, and so here I'm going to do the, the bottom portions at first, then I'll do the middle portions, and then I'll go back and do the top. That way I'm not, I'm not uh, backtracking. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and swap back to my ditch ruler because it's shorter. I like uh, shorter rulers are easier for me to handle whenever I'm doing just, you know, smaller straight lines. Okay, now I'm going to do the middle boomerang part. One more line here, and then we're going to do the top or the most inner straight line. One to go, and then we're done with this part. Awesome. Oh, that looks so good. Okay. Oh, I love the way that block looks. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remark some of my lines here on this top triangle before I do that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stitch up. Okay, so I had to backtrack a little bit there, but it's okay. So now I'm going to come in here and do my fun little free motion loops. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm watching my boundary lines, which are the opposite colored, you know, or differently colored triangles and squares. And I'm making sure that I'm just touching that line and not going over it. Okay. Mark my lines again. Just real quick. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I love the way this ruler work is turning out. It looks really nice.
gonna go ahead and remark these lines again. Perfect. I'm gonna do my free motion loops. Oh, I love the way those turn out. Okay, a little bit of ruler work left. free motion swirls. And this is our last little triangle piece to quilt. Nice, and we are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and come to the outside of the block. And I'm going to trim my threads so that I have plenty to come back later and bury them if that's what I want to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my bobbin thread. Cut that plenty long enough that I don't have to worry about not having enough. All right, let's take a look at the finished block. All right, so we've got this block finished. It turned out so good, and I just love, love, love the ruler work on these little squares. I think it looks awesome and really accentuates the block. So I like doing a little bit of ruler work with the free motion, and I just love how this turned out. So um, we are ready to go ahead and move on to the next block.